I feel like each film is a limb. So I've, I've used three limbs. <laughs> Ultimately, to me, it's like a portrait of all these women that raised me, that I love, that still confuse me, that are still like a mystery to me. Jamie is uh, discovering women and music and all of these things that were happening culturally at that time. And you have his mother who desperately cares for him and wants to make sure that he's exposed to all of these things and feels a bit inadequate. So she uh, recruits two other women that are in her life. What are you asking? Well, how do you be a good man? He's, he's only got me. It's just, it's not enough. You're serious. As she recruits the lady, she ends up getting sort of tested and pushed around and, and shown things that she didn't see coming. Background action, action. Dorothea is a woman who believes in letting kids go off and make their own mistakes, but like, all of us is worried and wants to know that her son is safe. She's trying to raise him as both his mother and his father since his father left at a very young age, leaving him without a clue in how to join the world of being a man. You guys don't smoke like that. Don't hold it like that. I'm going to tell you about this music. I'm going to tell you about this art. There is a big, wide world out there. These girls are a way for me to say to him, okay, here are some people who can help you. They can explain to you how it works between men and women, because I don't really know. So it's kind of a journey of both of them together trying to figure that out. It's just life, portraits of these different people and kind of how they intertwine. It's like a brief moment of time with these people together. But the other part of the story is that that's not a permanent situation. They all connect and then they all go apart. It's about sort of like those moments of grace that happen, that are always fleeting, that are always temporary, um, and been trying to sort of pay attention to them. I'm excited about everyone going back to 1979. It's a very interesting time. You're right on the cusp of going out of the 70s into the 80s, and 1979 looks very different than 1980. It looks very different than 1977 or 78. It's a very specific time, politically and socially. One of the things I really loved about the way Mike constructed this world, it had the, the dialogue and then the images set next to each other. You can take anything and put it together, and that just feels very natural to me. And I did it in Beginners, where I sort of like, it's not just what you shoot, it's things that you acquire, and it doesn't always have to be live action motion, it can be stills, it can be many different things. And that just comes very naturally to me, and it seems like, well, yeah, of course, that's, I'm telling a story, I'm gonna use everything I know how to, how to play with. Reading the script, I could see that it was gonna be a very personal journey for Mike. Mike's version of the 70s was very unique. There was a lot of specific selection of this 79 versus the 79 that you might see in a movie or 77, 78 leading up to it. I feel like 1979 is the beginning of now. There's so many cultural things that we're still in the shadow of. 79 is a really difficult time to design because it's a transition period. That was the hardest thing, is defining like a generation that's figuring itself out. The people who love Black Flag hate the talking heads. What? The punk scene is very divisive. Mike is a really, really specific director. He knows exactly what he wants. He moves really, really fast. And I think that it's just about everyone trying to keep up. There was something I was trying to capture both in the late 70s in Santa Barbara and California where there's, there's a recession happening, there's boredom, and there's this general sort of unmonetized quality 
which is I'm very nostalgic for, and I think it was sort of beautiful, and we're, we're missing out on that. All right, that was amazing. Tails. Michael Raw and Eric Scott. All right, so camera moves inside for 191 with uh, Annette. Just couldn't make it? Yeah. Back tomorrow. Monday. I got it. Got it. For fun. A lot of this comes from my real life. And because I'm dealing with my own memories, I have this kind of strange version of my mom or whoever I'm, I'm writing from in my head. And then the script gets done, and then I kind of wake up to reality. You know, like, who are the people in the world that can play this? Well, I guess I had been attached to the movie for a while, so we were trading music back and forth and talking about artists, and he was giving me big books of interesting photographers he liked um, from the 70s. And Abby is a photographer, and being a photographer is both a way to hide, and it's also kind of aggressive because you're capturing moments as they happen. Don't. Julie's like a volcano, you know? She's always bubbling and thinking of things, and she's smart, she's like an AP student, but then she also has this secret side. She's kind of a baddie, <laughs> and there's a lot of stuff that's going on inside of her, and she voices her opinion, and she says things that are very unexpected. Home birth actually stunts the baby's growth personality. What is a growth personality? It's a real term. I, myself, learned so much about you just putting yourself up on the table. When we were doing rehearsals, we had to just throw ourselves under the table and just naked, just, just raw truth. It's not an unusual thing as an actor to be playing someone who's in someone's life. There's some aspect of their lives that they are trying to in some way make real through you. But with movies, of course, the important thing is what happens in the moment and what happens when nobody was looking and what happens when something happens that neither of you ever thought about or discussed. And sometimes it's those things that are really the most important. Dorothea is a woman full of contradictions who loves her son deeply. She's a woman who knows how to you know, if there's like a problem in her house, she can fix it. She can rewire a lamp. She can uh, hang a door. All right, so we're gonna have to rematch that. Now, is that is that actually wood that or is, is that plaster? No, the plaster is underneath it. The mold. We meet William when he is already a boarder in the house of Dorothea, and you get a sense that he's kind of lost. And you know, he's mid forties. He hasn't been married. Um, he doesn't have any kids. He doesn't really know what he's doing with his life. He just wants to be able to make a relationship work, but doesn't have any of the language for it. So he's in the business of learning it from these women. Do you want to fool around? Really? Mike Mills is a badass, and this was a kick-ass experience. I can't even talk about it, it was so awesome. <laughs> There's nothing 1979 about being a mom or being a kid or being in love or all the different ways these people are trying to be alive and get out of their own prisons they made for themselves and the prisons that society wants to put them into. And I feel like that's the basic underlying energy of the movie is how can I be free and alive and get out of these traps that like culture, my parents, my mom, my dad, myself talked me into.